Well, we are at about 100,000 miles. It has come a long way in a very short time, and that's largely because my job requires me to drive about 30,000 miles a year. So as such, I'm about at 99,000 miles, and by the time you see this video, I will probably have just crossed 100,000 miles. So you might be wondering, what has gone wrong, what has gone right, what has been replaced on my 2017 Mini Cooper S? Well, let's dive in. So there it is, my Pepper White 2017 Mini Cooper S with the JCW appearance package and my new speed wheels, NM Engineering lowering springs. It's been blacked out. It's had the splitters put on it, the diffuser put on it, my special license plate, new graphics. It's had a lot done in a very short amount of time. There's one thing I did add to the car recently. And pardon the dirtiness of my engine bay, but I reinstalled my dine-in tune. And in actuality, this is a different dine-in. What happened was I was getting a really bad check engine light every time it would throw an excessive boost pressure fault. So I took the dine-in off the car. I recently reinstalled it and it's been working fantastic. So I haven't had a major issue with that so far. So with the JCW tuning kit on the car and the dine-in, this car has about 255 horsepower, give or take. In the time that I've owned this car, I've done a lot. I replaced the tail lights with the Union Jack ones. I've done the splitter, like I mentioned, the JCW Pro exhaust, which I love. I've actually had an issue with this where the valve kept shutting. So I did something different here to fix that. I went in and unplugged it. So it stays open full time now. You will also remember my BAV sound install that I did. So I installed BAV sound speakers and they're all over the car in various locations. It was a pain in the butt to do it in the back seats, but I did it nonetheless. The result was a pretty decent sound system, but I like the Harman Kardon just as much. I also swapped out the Cooper S struts for JCW units because I wanted a sport suspension with a more stiff ride because better for cornering, right? So that was that. I've also added the Nightjack scuttles with LEDs. A lot has been done to this car in a very short amount of time, which begs the question, what has failed and what has required immense repairs? Because I mean, 100,000 miles, you would think it needs a lot of repair work. And the truth is, no, it hasn't had any major repair work. Routine oil changes, routine maintenance, a few things that might need to be addressed at some point. At 100,000 miles, this car is probably one of the most reliable minis I've ever owned. And that's saying something about the mini brand. The quality has significantly improved in the last 20 years. Am I considering getting rid of this car and getting something new? Possibly, but for the time being, I'm rolling around in this and enjoying it. Now I did speak to someone recently who has a Mini Cooper over in Germany with close to 400,000 miles on it, which is insane. He's actually going for 1 million miles on his car. He said so far, the only major stuff that's come up is around at about 160,000 miles. If I'm correct on my, what he told me, it needed the timing chain replaced. At about 200,000 miles, it needed a new clutch, give or take. But otherwise, not much mechanically has gone wrong. I'm gonna need new brakes at some point. I'm gonna need new rotors, new pads at some point. There's gonna be a few things that are gonna wear out. I'm gonna need new clutch at some point. I have to take it in for an oil change at some point soon because it's due for one probably. And at almost 100,000 miles, it is due for one, I think. I have to replace the windshield because as you can see, it's cracked badly. I have the windshield at the dealership. They have all the parts in. I'm just waiting for the insurance company to take care of things there. Of course, I have to pick the location that is the loudest because not only is it in a flight path with the downtown airport, it's also near tons of railroad tracks where trains like to go through on a regular basis. So I have to deal with train horns and low flying aircraft. But I figured it'd be appropriate to bring this car back down to where I started with the channel and where I started with this car. 
as you all remember, the first photos of this car were taken down here in the West Bottom. So it seemed only fitting that I do it again. So what else has gone wrong with this car? Well, nothing aside from the usual stuff. Yes, this thing is peppered with paint chips all over the place. Lots of them, some big ones here, everywhere. And there's been some paint failure on the front bumper thanks to poor prep work when this was painted. And I'm not gonna say what shop did the painting on this, but I didn't take the new one that I bought to replace this one back to that body shop. I had it painted at another shop. But this happened and I wasn't too happy about that. But I mean, it shouldn't have happened. The previous, the previous chin on the front of the car, the previous inlet on the front of the car was body color and it had no failure of paint on it. But otherwise, the car is held up fairly well. I did replace the hood scoop at one point. I replaced all the badging because I wanted the black new badges, so we did that. Overall, I love it. Now, what are my complaints about the car? If I had to order one, I would not order it with the roof rails, and the reason why is, one, I don't like how they look, and two, the finish on them fails over time, especially with enough rock chips that you kick up. And because of the tires I have and how far they stick out, they do kick up rocks here. Now, if I could find mud flaps that didn't look terrible, I could put those on there and probably solve that problem. But in the meantime, this thing just kicks rocks back. So that being said, I probably wouldn't have ordered it with the roof rails. I probably would not have ordered one with the sunroof either. I like the sunroof and all. I don't necessarily need it and nor do I use it, which is why it's currently wrapped in vinyl. If I really wanted to, I have the belt line wrapped because it's chrome and I just wrapped it in black. I could have that changed out for the gloss black OEM kit that's now available. There's a lot of different things I could do. Right now the car is in winter mode, so it has 17 inch new speed wheels, which are really lightweight. The Michelins are very good tires, but I also have a set of 18 inch wheels at home that I really love, the OZ wheels. Unfortunately, one of those tires is a nail in it, so that will have to be dealt with before I could install them back on this car or even any other car I happen to get. Repairs that have been done over the years, I had to replace this side skirt black piece right here because a truck kicked up a large piece of tire and flung it at the car. Fair warning, when you remove this sill to do that, you have to take out the sill plate which means you have to peel it out and buy a new one because there's screws under here and this will not come out in one piece. So I thought this was a fun feature when I installed it, the floating center caps for the Mini Cooper wheels. And I've never seen them in action, but I hear they're pretty cool looking when you're driving down the road and this thing stays perfectly level. Now, not knowing that Mini was going to eventually do this, I did install, because it had the JCW appearance package, I installed JCW wheel arches with this extra lip here. This came in very handy with these tires that are a little wider than stock, but it also gives the car a nicer, more aggressive look. That was something I did not know that Mini was going to eventually do on all of their cars, and then they did it. So, lo and behold, I have a relatively updated car. And from a distance, it does look like a John Cooper works. Now, you'll know immediately that it's not if you are a true mini enthusiast like myself because the John Cooper works badge is on the wrong side of the car. The Cooper S badging was over here at one point. I had it removed because I liked the cleaner look of it and put my number 37 logo there. But I left the John Cooper works badge because it was a tuning kit that was installed. Now, some other little things. I do need to readjust the tailpipe tips because one is not quite out as far as the other. Some other things I learned about this car when doing some of these upgrades is this diffuser, you have to take the whole rear bumper off the car to do it. It is not going to be an easy, easy job to do by yourself out in your driveway without taking the whole bumper off the car. I had to take the whole bumper off the car and I still couldn't get this centerpiece locked in correctly. Took it to the shop. I'm not going to tell you how they popped it in there, but it's really rather ingenious how they did it. Bottom line is they got it installed, no problems. Now when it comes to cold starts, because I have the exhaust switched to open full time, it sounds really, really cool. <laughs> So now let's go for a spin. After two years of owning this car, what has changed? It sounds better for one. 
but not too much has changed. In fact, the car, I think, feels even better, more broken in than it did when I first bought it. And my thoughts when I bought this car, because I knew the amount of mileage I was gonna be doing at some point with my job, was I wanted to see the longevity of one of these. I wanted to see if at 100,000 miles, if one of these is a good vehicle to drive long term. And sure enough, it has proven to be very reliable, very fun to drive, and almost zero problems. Now, right now, with the used car prices being the way they are, this car is probably worth a lot more, even at 100,000 miles, than it would have been prior to that. So there's so many shortages out there. This car is about $19,000 right now used. Now driving feel, yes. Putting the JCW struts on this car with the NM Engineering Springs made the suspension stiffer. I like it when it's around cornering. It does feel a bit rough on the city streets, especially Kansas City's city streets because they tend to be uneven, potholed, and uh, just uncomfortable sometimes. So looking back on the last two years of owning this car, if I had to do it again, would I? Well, let's just say it was a sad day for me when I traded in my JCW Clubman because I felt like I might have made a mistake after doing that because I really loved that car. I really love this car. And I'm sure the same reaction that I had with my Clubman will happen with this car when it's time to go to the new one. Overall, I've enjoyed having this car for the time that I've had it. And if I end up keeping it longer, fantastic. If I end up keeping it shorter, I'll have a new one even better. There's gonna be a video coming out at some point where I'm gonna talk about longevity a little bit more. I'll be doing a video sharing some information from a subscriber of mine who has a really high mileage F car, which is something that not many people would expect. But I did ask all of my subscribers what the mileage is on their Mini if they have one. And some of them have been pretty high up there. I've been rather impressed. A lot of people drive their Minis a lot longer. So having seen my car, having ridden around with me in my car, what are your thoughts on the F56? If you own one out there, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think that they are long lasting, great vehicles, or do you think they're just as unreliable as the previous two generations? Because I've never had any major issues with any of my minis, apart from a handful of things. But I know a lot of people out there aren't always as lucky when it comes to a car. And sometimes it's about maintenance, sometimes it's about whether you maintained it properly or whether the previous owner maintained it properly, assuming you bought a used one. You could have also had an instance where you just happened to buy one that happened to be a little bit more problematic. It really just kind of is a luck of the draw. I've managed to be lucky with every Mini I've owned, but I've also been careful about keeping up with the maintenance. When there was something that needed to be fixed, I got it fixed. I didn't just wait around for it because I knew if I waited that there would be an issue. And that's what a lot of car buyers do and tend to do is they don't fix a car when there's a problem. They wait until there's lots of problems and then get the car fixed. At that point, you have now racked up miles and you've racked up potential expense because that one little repair is now six little repairs and those six little repairs now cost you several thousand dollars when before it would have cost you maybe a couple hundred dollars or several hundred dollars. So deferred maintenance is always the bane of any car's existence, especially a Mini Cooper. Maintain them properly, maintain them correctly, do the routine maintenance, keep up on the maintenance, and these cars will last a very long time. And with that, let's see what the future holds for the Mini brand and even for my channel. So, will you see this car again in another video? It's quite possible. Or you might see something new. Only time will tell. But until next time, just remember, Life is too short to drive a boring car, so drive a Mini. I'll see y'all later. Like what you see, check out more content on the channel at the end of this video, and thank you for watching.